name's Stephen Monkey Mason, and welcome to Fast Forward Reviews. Hello, and welcome to the final episode of season four of Fast Forward Reviews. Now, there's been a bit of conflict about what this was. It was going to be something else, and then we're going to do something else, but Abraham still wanted to do the original one, so, right, okay, so, we're going to compromise and give you the weirdest, the wackiest, but the most wonderful episode of Fast Forward Reviews ever. Starting with Abraham. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Your turn in there. Are you ready? Are you all set? Enjoy this episode. Hello? Are you near me? Am I on the air yet? Hello everyone out there listening, hello, my name is Abraham and this is where it was going to be a fast forward review as you can all hear me right now, my voice over your ghetto blasters in your rooms, what hey, was that? who's shouting, be quiet, be quiet, you you know, across the world, we want to talk about this, now this is the fast forward review for another film that will get there soon, it was meant to be pump up the volume. Now, we got a problem, we got a problem, we got a problem, because we got a jump cut. Yes, we have to jump cut. Now listen to me right now. I wanted to do pump up the volume, because it needs some love. But I got hit with a thing, we did cuffs last season. I'm like, right, okay, whatever. So, pump up the volume's amazing. You better check out pump up the volume. The original podcast movie, the movie that needs released. Now I know you people out there can't actually see me right now. When you watch the video, you will watch it. But yeah, pump up the volume for all you people watching the video and not listening on the internet. Look, VHS, a DVD released in Britain as a 15 from Entertainment and Video, a big box VHS from 2020 Vision, a little box video from 2020 Vision, and the motherfucking laser disc. Yes, Sean Pertwee, that is a motherfucking laser disc. Yeah, now. The fun thing about wanting to do this as a fast forward view with jumping around was the bombshell that I lent my other copy of Pump Up the Volume to Christian Slater and he never gives it back. It's a true fucking story. How do you think I got this? Sorry, can you hear me now? How do you think I got this? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's cuffs. Now it got to my attention that maybe we would have some problems editing the cuffs video, the cuffs video, the Pump Up the Volume video, if we were going to have Christian Slater in. Having Christine Sader in the video wouldn't be the problem, it would be somebody else there. So, I have lost my battle. We are not doing Pump Up the Volume as the final episode. We are doing the tournament. For the love of God, you want to talk about Jake and some chambers? I'm not doing it though. You can. Enjoy the video. Bye! I'm done. I'm done. Hello? Hello? Here you go. Hey, I'm done. It's your turn now. Hello? Are you dead? Hello? I'm not fucking doing it. No fuck, fuck off. Enjoy the video if you ever... No, 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 fuck off. Bye. Okay, the movie is The Tournament! So he took like, what, Gordon, Stephen, 14 years, we're getting there! Dun dun dun! Jump cut. This one's going to be pretty wild, this review. Hope you're sitting down, hope you've got some food. Make sure you've got your popcorn ready, because this is a movie. The year, 2007. The release, 2010. Technically, in America, it was 2009. In England, it was almost November, 2010. Like, wow, like, bloody hell, nearly four years later. 
I'm getting good at maths, get in. Age rating for this movie is an 18. Whoop, whoop. Big 18, don't know why it was a whoop whoop there, but there we go, it's an 18. Budget. We definitely had a budget. 7 million, give or take. Yeah, 7 million. We'll go for 7. Someone will probably say it was 6. It's definitely 7. Maybe 8. I don't know. Budget, 7 million for now. It's on for 91 minutes. Dun dun dun. No idea why there's lots of sound effects today. This is proper improv. This, you know, it's there. It's there. Well, it's talking gorillas either. It's, it's there. It's there. Written by Jonathan Frank. <laughs> Nick Roundtree. And a little bit extra from Carrie Young. Directed by the finger. <laughs> Directed by Scott Mann. That's with two ends. <laughs> Massive shout out to Mark McQueen as well. He was uh, Scott Mann. Special shout out to Mark McQueen, who was Scott Mann's second hand man in that. For the second unit direction or first unit direction, whichever one you want to call it, Mark McQueen is well on to do stuff like Top Gear and other kind of movies like Devil's Playground. So yeah, top two of the top British directors together, along with <laughs> the legendary Keith Bell, the producer of Dog Soldiers, The Descent, Harry Brown, Gary Young wrote Harry Brown, so there's that connection. Starring. Kelly who? Yes, that's Kelly who? Kelly who? Oh, stop in three, two, one. Robert Carlyle. <laughs> the legend, now that is Scott Athens. He's amazing. Yep, that's Scott Athens. <laughs> Sebastian Foucon. Hashtag got bored of that angle. Rachel Grant is in this. <laughs> Over here, JJ Perry is also in this. Made by pretty much everyone on that call sheet. Get out of bed that day on the right now, 20th of July 2007. Get out of bed, Stephen. Your wake up call. Oh, day 16 of 50. John Lynch is also in this. The evil villain, Liam Cullinan. Sorry, I'm getting pretty dry for it. I'm shouting. <laughs> yeah, and also on the Dog Soldiers reference. The legend that is Craig Conway is also in this. Along with Ian Summerhalder and <laughs> and Vin Rams. Oh uh, yeah, the first day I met Vin, he um, just went as he was filming the car parking scene. I was filming something else, and he just looked at me, and I was like, it was cold as ice. What an awesome guy, like, but you know, like that guy was just like, don't fuck with me. <laughs> just like, yes, <laughs> that's my friend. And if you want to get technical, the guy did on the floor, me. Technically. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's this part of the video. There goes the script. There it goes. It's gone. So here's a little bit about the movie. So every seven years, the best assassins in the world gather in a town while the on viewers of association, a gambling room or a money room, watch. <laughs> and one by one, there is none. And the last assassin is the best assassin, wins a lot of money and gets the right to be the best assassin in a world where we need assassins. Now, <laughs> as much as that is baffling and more confusing, it's set in Middlesbrough, uh, one of the most, at that time, CCTV towns in the northeast of England. Now, you've got to remember, this is written by Geordies, made by Geordies from the ground up. Not Geordies, Northerners. Let's go for Northerners. I don't want to be telling someone who's from Middlesbrough that they're a Geordie. <laughs> don't go down that fiasco road. But yeah, now the origin stories, um, the foundation is Battle Royale. You cannot deny that. I sat and watched Battle Royale with Jonathan Frank and Nick Roundtree and JJ Perry one night. And uh, it was JJ's first experience of um, Battle Royale. And you know, you know you've know, seen Battle Royale, it's like, whoa. And John, 
you know, he's great. At John was a great storyteller. Like he can tell you a story right to your face, and you'd be like, "Vision kids walking down the hallways as the moon turns red." You know, he's great at that. And Neil, Neil, Nick, sorry, sorry, Nick. It's also again a really good investment. And they've went on to do other stuff. Scott Mann has went on to do stuff like The Heist and The Final Score. So in a perfect world, if you reverse this, Batista probably would have ended up being in this as well. So. Back to the movie. Um, all the assassins gather together. They've all got tracking tracking devices in them, so everyone knows where they are. Like really sat nav going down there. One by one, there is none. The winner takes all. That is it. Sets and some backstories of Joshua being the um, original last year's winner coming back, but enticed to come back. Who killed him? He's come to the tournament to find who killed his wife. Um, you've got people who are just there for the bragging rights, you've got people who are there just for the money, you've got people who are there who've got their own redemption, and then you throw in a priest, played by Robert Carlyle, who basically is just having a cup of tea and having a bad hangover, flip, goes to tracking the beast, goes down his throat, and everyone thinks he's an assassin, and it takes one of the other assassins to realise he's not an assassin, and she's out to protect him, seeking some redemption for herself. So that sums up the overall film. Okay, stand by, and roll now. Okay, am I ready for this? Let's try. <laughs> Let's try. Let's really try. Really, really try and script it. It's boiling hot outside. I'm sweating. This is the tournament. So once upon a time, there was a film made in Bulgaria. Yeah, Bulgaria. Sofia. Yes, the film is set in Middlesbrough. I understand that. So when you take the concept of taking seven million dollars and taking seven million dollars, I mean in England pounds, and taking away to Bulgaria, you get some lev or love money. Now the tournament, to me personally, suffered. It suffered at the hands of piracy, as I once said at the start of this video. I bought this in LA in 2010, um, in two, early 2010. It had been out a while. I should have really had the DVD cover when I said that, but you know what? Jump cut! Dun dun dun! Cover number one. So that's the American one I bought in LA at um, Ambiza and Abu's. Wow, Stephen, work on your English. Amoeba music, what an amazing record store that was. Front cover, Rob Carlyle, Kelly Hugh, um, Vin Rams, and then at the bottom, it's got Scott Atkins, Sebastian Foucault, Ian Summerhalder, and then some random guy. I have no idea who that is. And then it came out in England almost a year later. So in the meantime, it got seriously bootlegged. So many people were telling me about it, and I was like, I haven't even seen it. I got to see this at the UK premiere in Manchester. Um, that, uh, no, 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 about four months before, four or five months before, it got its official DVD Blu-ray release in the UK. That's the DVD cover. I don't know what they're doing with Ian Somerhalder said. I know it makes sense to add Ian Somerhalder's name on the box because he is massive now, but that's not his body. Let's spot it out there. It's not his body. So I've known of the tournament since early days, really early days, and um, there was a lot of stuff going on at the time. There was some actors involved like John claude Van Damme earlier and stuff like that and so on and so on. Now, what Keith Bell did was take a script, get it polished, and see potential in a great director that would become Scott Mann. Um, and then, you know, going from what Keith had done in the past with stuff like um, The Descent, where it's all in pine wood and they just really move the sets around, the stones in the back and it's all lit, you know what I mean? It's a very clever disguised movie, that's what it's claustrophobic as fuck. And then you take dog shows in the fact where it's cabin in the woods, you know, background completely looks the same, and they spend a lot of money on the creepiest and one of the best looking werewolves has ever been made, and they nail it, do you know what I mean? And this example though, you're making a movie in Bulgaria to make it look like the northeast of England. So you're gonna go, right. Now on another note, if you watch a movie called Shepherd with Van Damme, so it's a little bit of a connection there, Scott Atkins is also in that, and so is JJ Perry, and a lot of the stunt guys, the alpha stunt team that worked on the tournament, um, they make the same locations we used for the tournament to make it look like England, to make it look like the border of Mexico. So Bulgaria, there's some mint films coming out there. Uh, shark in Venice, just wrapped up. I actually got to kick the shark in the head, but I don't have that video footage. I don't know who filmed that. Got lost in the shuffle. Looking back at the tournament, I really enjoyed it. And again, I feel it deserves to get reissued with a steelbook. I have hours and hours of footage that's never seen the light of day, and there's echoes of it in this review. Um, 
I've sat around for years not doing anything about the tournament. It's just a, became an urban myth. It's only been the last year that stuff's creeped out on the YouTube channel, like the stuff like Rare, Storm 66, Red Mist, music video that I edited together to the, the fight scene in the uh, strip joint. The strip joint was in a small room inside an airport hangar in the hot Burman down sun of Bulgaria. And I had a great time editing that movie. But I understand the politics and the waiting and stuff like that. But the tournament needs a resurgent. You know what I mean? It's a great action movie for a start. It is what it is. It's a product of products. Now, basically, when it started, we had Vin Rims, and then we got Robert Carlyle. We always had Kelly Hu. She actually lived next door to me for like nearly three months. But we always had her around. We had Scott Atkins in for a bit, Sebastian Foucault, and all these actors would cross over. And that sets up the movie. And when they do it, the stunt teams in J.J. Perry, amazing martial artists in his own right, were all in on it. Not, no one was there to take a paycheck. Everyone was there to have fun, but make the best movie they could for how it was done, even in the stressful situations of doing 12-hour days and then 12-hour nights. And then, you know what I mean? You film in summit and it just absolutely lashes it down and stuff like that. And accidents happen and stuff doesn't go right. But again, it's the art of filmmaking. I mentioned earlier on before, I stayed up and watched um, Battle Royale with JJ and Jono. And I made the mistake of staying up way too late with JJ for the next day. And JJ just being a fucking veteran. You just need to look at his IMDb and go, fuck me. Um, this video footage about to appear. Well, I couldn't believe my eyes. He just kicks two cinder blocks to bits. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, bitch. So around the filament, there were some great times and all that, and some nice people. I haven't got a bad word to say about anyone I met on the tournament. The only person I'd probably say a bad thing about is probably me. I've always said I shouldn't have gone to the tournament so sharply. I waited around for a long time before the start tournament started filming, and at the time I just literally produced Better in Silence, and literally I had no money left. <laughs> like, the tournament had been stopped starting for a while, and I think two days before um, I went to Bulgaria, I got hit in the head in the back, in the back with a coconut and I had a massive contusion on the back of my head. And I had the worst headache for about four weeks. And again, I was really trying to take a lot in with a filament, make sure I was capturing everything I could. Um, but I literally, like, <laughs> you know, I literally, there's heavy smoke there that didn't mind smoking at the time as well. But like, again, drinking and just traveling, I was just, Looking back at it now, I probably would have been a bit more like, you know, you know, it's me. I'm always the same though. I'm always going to film shit. You know what I mean? Everywhere I go, I'm always filming stuff. It's always been the same. So you take that and put it into the tournament. There you go. The tournament is packed on a different run of some super stunts in martial arts. You know what I mean? Scott Atkins, for example. Scott Atkins had just come off the back end of it. Undisputed and been around for a while and has made an amazing name for himself But he came in for this fight scene along with Kimmy who is Kelly's stunt double and delivers this amazing fight in the church um, So Scott Atkins, even though it's a short role, it's a brilliant cameo Sebastian Foucault, free runner, the guy running away from James Bond, the guy from the video game, one of the pioneers of free run You know what I mean? Um, he was just so funny just learning English and stuff He did some spectacular stunts like jumping off a bridge onto a double-decker bus do you know what I mean? And it was just like, for me, I was down on the floor and I watched that and you know, it's just skill, it's talent. You then take in the star power of Vin Rams coming in there, who, honest to God, he just looked, wanted to give the best performance possible. Um, and you know what I mean? He was like, right, I'm here for a short time, let's get this done, it's done. Robert Carlyle, to me, had one of the hardest bits because he was the one who didn't want the action. His character is the priest. He doesn't know what the fuck's going on. He's recovering from an ha he's recovering from a, a hangover. He's just like, oh, oh. And like he he delivered. You know, not one person turned up for a paycheck. What was that? But when you look at the movie, it is ludicrous, the idea that it all kicks off. And But again, if you're going to watch an action movie for an hour and a half, it's packed. It's packed full of chases, um, car crashes, bus chases. The bus chase uh, was absolutely amazing. But like the stuff in the archive where you look at the, the guy who did all the pyrotechnics, and I think he's called Zacko, Zacko, Zack, someone like that. He gets ran over and his glasses survived like being hit by a bus and we're all fascinated by that. But there's loads of stuff like happens and stuff like that in movies. One of the fun facts about the movie is, I talked about Better Than Silence before, Laconia. 
who at the time I worked with and we just got demo of the month from Metal Hammer. What an absolute rise and um, they're actually on the soundtrack hidden away in the gas station scene. It wasn't as big and as proud as like we probably would have wanted it, but it's there, you know. But again, it's just one of those things where when you start something, there's a big idea, but it needs to funnel in to a final product. And I understand that now. For years I didn't, but now I do. Um, I still keep in contact with a lot of people, you know, a lot of people from the show. Uh, I would love to go back to Bulgaria, but like half the time you get picked up from the hotel and you get taken to places and you're only there for two days and you don't know who the fuck you are. And then it's just fucking crazy. But like the Bulgarians as people are fucking amazing. I had some amazing nights out and I met some great people over it. Some of the other fun facts, um, Scott Mann um, made a little promo. Rob Hall is the guy who edited the movie as well. Rob is an amazing editor who's one of some great stuff as well. Um, they made a trailer for the tournament and stuff like Danny John Jules was in and Rachel Grant was originally in and Sebastian Foucault had made a brief cameo. Um, they all got like re uh, reoccurring roles. Rachel Grant was absolutely like a, a gem to meet. You know what I mean? You ever meet somebody who's full of life? She's that. Um, unfortunately, Danny John Jules didn't get back for the film, but you know, Sebastian was there as well. Um, that video, um, just a bit of history. I made a video for Laconia called Awake and me and my ex-girlfriend had broke up and it was, it was a long time ago now and the house was involved and all kinds of stuff like that but um, one of the things I did was edit her out the video by taking the promo of the tournament and chopping it up and that was my very first video on YouTube ever and when I asked Carve what was the best way to send it to him then to send it to Keith and go look does it end love video editing um, that opened a lot of doorways, that video. Cav was like, put it on that YouTube. <laughs> that, that YouTube. Now, if you want to check out something else, um, I know this video has completely gone off the rails for fast forward reviews, um, but I said it would. Um, check out Baboonery, a Chris Jericho story. Um, there was an incident at the tournament. Well, it wasn't an incident, we just didn't have an actor. And so in the meantime, it was me, but then we needed an actor to actually act the, the actual rules. I just filled in the void. If you check that video out, it's the funniest fuck story about Chris Jericho. So make sure you check that out. Right, so to me personally, this is a five-star movie. I don't watch it often enough, and I have not watched it before this review. Um, again, if you check out the channel, Sink or Swim 2020, you get to see a lot of my footage mixed into a video that took me a long time to do. Um, I would love to more, again, if they were to do something with the tournament in the future, I think the tournament needs to be brought out. I think the artwork on a personal note is fucking shit for the English one. There's so much good things they could do for a steelbook, especially. Again, the name, the tournament. Like, well, now I'm used to check to see when the tournament's coming out, and you type in the tournament. Fair enough, there isn't another movie called the tournament. But anyone who's anyone who's been in any kind of sports in any kind of high school or anything like that, or any kind of karate chips or anything like that, brings in the word tournament into the title. That's <laughs> fucking honest to God. You gotta get down to the fucking 50s in the fucking Amazon fucking pages looking for the tournament. <laughs> so, oh man, totally. But no, the artwork, I mean, we used to go for the whole Michelangelo finger passing the gun kind of thing and um, the American um, DVD is a lot better than the English by far. But again, yeah, well, I mean, no disrespect to the, the things, but it's not Ian Summerhalder's body. Um, looking back, um, I had a fantastic time. I really did. It took me a long time to talk about this out loud and obviously do something where I'm attaching my name to it and, you know, saying, look, check the tournament out. Been a massive part of my life. Um, that's what 2021 is to me personally. It's moving forward. That's why this is the last episode of Fast Forward Reviews. I'm up to all kinds of bits and bobs in the background and stuff like that. But after we did the white out review, I was like, right, we're definitely going to do Pump Up the Volume. And the reason why we didn't do Pump Up the Volume was, wasn't that Christian said it would not be in the video. It would be the fact that we would have to edit out the X into it and it would just get a bit messy in the contrast. So it's been great to think about this today, get down there, chop some names out. Um, you know what I mean? There's been a lot of people I've missed out. Some of the, the, the supporting actors and stuff like that, like Dustin and Tom, um, and a girl I can never pronounce her name. She plays Vin's wife in the movie. Um, she was amazing as well. Um, 
she actually sung at the rap party and she was absolutely amazing but um uh, yeah, it's just, you know what I mean? There's some fantastic people like Shelly and uh, Vessie and all these kind of people, they've all got nicknames. When you look on IMDb, their names are about this fucking long. <laughs> but it's amazing. The Alpha Stun team and stuff like that and Carla, how much they've done. When they made the tournament, they made it the best they could for the time they did it. And everyone involved wanted the best film possible. And like any film, everyone's always going to say they can change bits and bobs and that. But again... I've got massive respect for Keith and all the people like behind the scenes that made it happen. You know what I mean? Because it's schedules and stuff like that and it's just the, the ideas and like it's ludicrous. I mean, I, I understand that my role got cut from the movie because I never signed a release form. I can say that. You know what I mean? But again, it's not like I was hiding from anyone. It's just like, hey, what's up? Um, but my role wasn't really necessary the part I was in um, and that's why I made the video Assassin a couple, uh, two years ago now so if you check that out as well I would you plugged in my video it's a prequel story of me before I got killed with a carrier pack <laughs> right thanks very much for watching this thanks for everyone who worked on the tournament I've met and be with this video has been made but nothing for love thank you very much everyone Hello, have you seen the movie? Do you know what I'm not masturbating? Hello, here's an outtake for you. Right down there, everyone who took time out to uh, send us in a clip. I reached out for a few people and I get look, I was like chasing all these people and everyone was sending stuff in. I was like, right, it needs to stop here because it's not pump up the volume all the way through. So I had to narrow it down as well, so it's absolutely awesome. I do want to say as well, um, in one of the edits, um, the, obviously there's two different versions of this video. This is the short one, well, it would appear on both, obviously. Um, the bit where Ian Samarva appears. Um, I put the Red Mist video in and I went, ah, like, that's really good. And then I went, oh no. Can I say, because I got like, check out the Red Mist video. It's on Lonely Trees Entertainment video. Uncut, has been 18. It's graphic, it's boobies in and stuff. And um, I just thought it would be great, to, you know, to like, you know, build a bridge with that video, check that video out, why it's there. And then I was like, right, well, I'll just end up with the same copyright claim. <laughs> So the version you've seen in it is Stomp 66, which obviously I directed their music video as well. And the like a shell over the top of each other, like this hybrid retro bleeding mix, I used to call it. And it's the two videos clashing together. Overall, when you watch it, the, the videos just work. They complement each other. Like the bit was shining. When the people are like, they're reaching so much for in Room 237. Like, yeah, if you watch the shining forward and backwards, transitionalise, Jack Nicholson looks like he's crying and stuff. It's that kind of reaching. <laughs> so yeah, next out take. And thank you very much for everyone who take time out to help out. See you in the next bit of the video. Are we still rolling? Here's an out take for you. That's what I was about. Just some original like artwork. Really old. Someone came up with that and that was from the last day of filming. One of the last days. And that's when uh, before Rachel Grant got killed. Just Rachel Grant is on the side there. Yeah. Great cast. Great crew. Great memories. Right. Off that rant. Just a tiny bit of movie trivia for you guys. That's the church at the start of the tournament where Father McAvoy, played by Robert Kyle, goes into crosses on the road and goes into the church. He's a quick out there. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's just there and the ton is still available to buy brand new in the shops. Next out take. He's now take here, the back of the door, the original tournament poster, £20 note, and that down there is all signed by the directors and stuff. So yeah, next outtake. Hello, hello in the outtakes. Have you missed me? I've been building my tent to make sure you check out Abraham in the tent. That's what else I've been doing while he's been doing his review of the tournament. I was there too, you know. Mm -hmm. Next outtake. I forgot to say it's in heaven as well, which is uh, really interesting because I've lived here for like three years now. It's about half a mile away from my house and I didn't even know 
proper random because I, uh, when I was filming that, I was stood outside the funeral home <laughs> and loads of people were looking out the window at me, so. Hello, get rid of that carrier bag. I'm not dying this time. Right, okay, so this has been chucked in. This is to tell you that this video is nearly finished. Thank you very much for checking it out. They will be a director's cut. I'm the director. Um, the typical Lonely Tree Entertainment I felt in the original edit I would waffle on for ages as I've got some stuff to unbox and box and box and I wanted to neaten it down. So this is the um, this is the very trimmed down version at the end. So after this, make sure you check out um, Lonely Tree's director's cut where you'll see how I ended up getting dog soldiers and reunited with Keith after a couple of years and finally get me tournament. Blu-ray signed by Keith as well, so it's pretty awesome. So yeah, this is just a little new add-on to shorten down the video and then get ready for the director's cut and get ready for some stuff in the future. Thanks for watching, goodbye for now.